Hello YouTubers, my name is Frederick Lopez and you are on a new action reaction. Today I'm going to be going over Lethal Weapon 3. Here we go. Lethal Weapon 3 is directed by Richard Donner. It stars Mel Gibson as Martin Riggs, Danny Glover as Roger Murtaugh, Joe Pesci as Leo Gitz, Rene Russo as Lorna Cole, and Stuart Wilson as Jack Travis. Riggs and Murtaugh are together for a third time where they must pursue an arms dealer who is a former LAPD officer who is stealing weapons from the Los Angeles Police Department. Riggs and Murtaugh also have to deal with Leo Gitz. And Riggs has a very special problem with a young and beautiful female police officer named Lorna Cole. In a nutshell, that's what Lethal Weapon 3 is about. You have Danny Glover, Mel Gibson come back, Joe Pesci reprises a role of Leo Gitz from Lethal Weapon 2, and Rene Russo is added to the cast as Lorna Cole, who's also a new love interest for Martin Riggs. This film was released in 1992, and it had different scripts. Uh, originally, there was a script going around about a mad bomber uh, and Riggs and Murtaugh having to basically play Simon Says with him. It wasn't used, but it was used for Die Hard with a Vengeance. They end up keeping the opening from that script, and Richard Donner uh, did a lot of the work. It had uh, Jeffrey Boehm do the script, but a lot of his ideas were scrapped. Richard Donner reworked it to where Lorna Cole would be a love interest. And also, Leo Getz would have more uh, things to do. Some of the villains' development were kind of shortened. And also, uh, she's uncredited, but the late, great Carrie Fisher was a script doctor for Lethal Weapon 3. Ultimately, Lethal Weapon 3 is one of those films that uh, continues the tradition, and it's one of those that's actually a pretty good film on its own. Is it as good as the first two? In my personal opinion, it's not quite up there with the first two films, but it still is a worthy entry and worthy of the Lethal Weapon name. But yeah, it has a lot of action, a lot of humor. There's a lot of funny stuff at the beginning, and Riggs and Murtaugh caused this bomb to blow up. There's a bomb in a parking garage, and they do not wait for the bomb squad. It goes off, a lot of property damage, and they get demoted down to beat cops, basically. There's a lot of humor there, like uh, Jay Walker and some stuff between Murtaugh and Riggs and him wearing light body armor, and it's like he's wearing a girl. A lot of funny humor in this one, more so than the previous two films. But that's where the action starts. They're beat cops, and they see a heist go on, and they go through this chase, and they find out that they're basically stealing. And in this film, you have Stuart Wilson play the antagonist, Jack Travis. He's an LAPD officer gone rogue, much like Dennis Hopper in Speed. And he's an arms dealer. They pretty much rob the weapons from the Los Angeles Police Department that are like in customs and stuff. And they rob it. They're not registered. They're not made into staplers yet. They're going back out there on the streets. And it's something very different. That's one thing I like about all the Lethal Weapon films. They're all very different from one another. Uh, Jack Travis, I like Stuart Wilson. He is a very, very, very underrated actor in my opinion. He played the villain Ninja Turtles 3, and yeah, he did an uncanny performance in Mask of Zorro. Uh, you can't even tell those three people are the same individual. It is insane how he just changes himself. He's a chameleon. Uh, I like his performance in this, but is he as intimidating as the previous two villains? No, not really, but I do like his performance, and it's funny how the even number Lethal Weapons 2 and 4, you have like international bad guys. And then you have somebody just gone rogue into some type of business. Like the first one was like an ex-military ex person basically going through heroin smuggling. And this one's like ex-LAPD officer going for arms dealing. And I, I kind of like that. Uh, it brought it down kind of more local and just Los Angeles and something that felt very street level again. Even though it does have more humor, this one feels more in touch with like the first Lethal Weapon in a way. Yeah, Roger Murtaugh, played by Danny Glover, only has a few days left to retire. So the whole film in a way is almost serving as a conclusion to the Lethal Weapon series at the time. And of course he doesn't retire in the film at all, but uh, it's still interesting. Uh, there's a lot of Leo Getz moments here. There's very funny uh, scenes between them, and uh, I like it, but it's a little bit too much Leo for me. Uh, he has, like, blonde hair for some reason, and he's a realtor now. He's trying to sell Roger Murtaugh's house. And Joe Pesci is funny. I love the scenes. It's just, to me, it's starting to get kind of more into that self-parody 
area. And 4 goes into it as well a bit, but uh, to me it was just a little bit too much. Even though I love Leo Getz, I liked all the scenes, I enjoyed the movie. To me the humor was a bit heavier than the first two films. But ultimately, again, it's about the relationship between Danny Glover and Mel Gibson as Riggs and Murtaugh, and they're fantastic in this. Uh, there's a scene where uh, he's talking to his son, and there's a friend of his named Daryl. And you get introduced to him at the beginning, but he's like riding with a gang. And anyway, he's just taking Riggs out for a burger, like at some joint, and... He sees him there, and he accidentally shoots a kid, one of his son's friends, dies, and that just weighs on his conscience, and it's a very heavy film. I like all the Lethal Weapons. This one is not my favorite, personally, but I do like the deep story, and in a way, it's aging really well. Uh, this film is much deeper than I've... This film is much deeper to me than the first time I uh, watched it. Uh, you have a lot of things with gangs and weapons and, and just basically the streets and it is kind of intense. It's a little bit watered down than what was probably going around in Los Angeles at the time, but you still get that element in there and it's somebody that he knew that was a friend of his son's and him taking a life and, and like basically the consequences of that on an individual and that's very, very sad and, and deep. And you get some stuff there in the middle, but ultimately, once Murtaugh comes out of his rut, he just goes after them, and it's them going after Jack Travis. Now, during this, when Murtaugh's in his rut, you have Renee Russa as Lorna Cole. She's given some great lines there. When they first see her, he's infernal affairs, and Riggs is just doing his usual messing around of, like, talking about money, and Murtaugh's just like, what? brilliant line of like ride me I'm your regular Portuguese airline or something and and then when she does like that cross-eyed thing to Riggs that he did in Lethal Weapon 2 she's pretty much the perfect complement to Martin Riggs she's the opposite of him but they're so similar that she's his equal he has finally met, met his match and uh, I think a lot of credits due to Carrie Fisher she gave a lot more to the lines and just personality of Laura Nicole and it really benefited here she's a strong female heroine and uh, she's a nice addition. She's basically a female rig. She knows martial arts. She's very smart ass. And I like the dynamic Renee Russo and Mel Gibson have with each other. Uh, they later on would be, of course, in Lethal Weapon 4 and Husband and Wife and Ron Howard's Ransom from 1996. I love the dynamic between them. And again, what I love about the Lethal Weapons is that Martin Riggs is giving character development. He's not always going to be that suicidal firecracker he was in the original he's developing more throughout each entry and uh, he's found somebody he could love and this is one of the few lethal weapons, that's actually the only lethal weapon where they don't mention his late wife Vicky so that was something different because I felt like that story was kind of told completely in two so they didn't have anything else to do really on that subject so it was nice seeing Martin Riggs kind of move on from his suicidal self he was crazy yeah he smokes cigarettes and he's trying to give up and and Murtaugh's just like, don't smoke in my house. Here, have this. And he ends up having like a dog biscuit problem. It's just hilarious. Uh, there's just a lot of funny stuff there. And I like, again, the dynamic and chemistry between Lorna Cole and Martin Riggs in this. And uh, them trying to figure out where these weapons are going and coming from. And uh, yeah, they have to go after Jack Travis in the third act. It's in the housing complex. Uh, very great scene. I mean, Richard Donner knows how to do action, and that's another thing that's deep, too. There's this whole scene in the middle where they find Jack Travis at the department where all the weapons are. They catch him robbing them, and they're after him. And the problem is, is he's creating these armor-piercing bullets. Speaking of that, Armor-Piercing Bullets by Michael Kamen from Lethal Weapon 3 is amazing. The soundtrack is incredible. That dun 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 And then the whole action scene is just perfect with the editing, the way it's filmed, just everything. But it's sad because there's this young kid and it went through his armor, his Armor-Piercing Bullets, and it killed a kid on his birthday, like a 22-year-old cop. And it's just sad that it killed a baby. It just shows what these people are doing, why Riggs and Murtaugh must stop them. They're seeing all these kids, both in gangs and just police officers, just getting killed on the streets because of this guy. So it adds something on a human level. But yeah, the soundtrack is great. Back to the beginning, I like that opening, but you have, it's probably me. 
by Sting and Eric Clapton, and then Runaway Train by Eric Clapton and Elton John. Very underrated score. If you're in the mood for playing an action game or a movie or whatever, check out the Lethal Weapon 3 soundtrack. It's amazing. But going on that chase scene, he's after Jack Travis, a cool uh, sequence in the subway. And it's kind of crazy. John DeBont actually did the cinematography for Lethal Weapon 3, so that's why it has a kind of look of Die Hard, and he also later on directed Speed two years later. It has that same type of look to it. Anyway, a crazy motorcycle chase, and then that whole part where he goes off the uh, incomplete freeway and he's just like, oh shit! Now he survives that really well, but it's just such an amazing sequence. Martin Riggs on the motorcycle and the way it's shot, it's just so incredible. But one thing that bogs me about this with the antagonist He's not as menacing, even though I like Stuart Wilson's performance. It's just that I don't know why he's getting away from Riggs. Like, I know he's getting older, and it's a human thing. They can't always catch the bad guy. But to me, I'm like, why is it so hard to get these guys? These guys don't seem as tough as the villains in the first two. He doesn't have the presence that the general had in the very first lethal weapon. I don't know, that's just me. I, I love his performance, though, as a villain. It's just that I wish they did something more to develop the villains in the writing and just make him a bit more intimidating. Because to me, they just seem like regular bad guys and I'm like why are they having this much trouble against them but uh great action set pieces and going back to what I was talking about earlier with the housing complex great sequence I like that whole sequence where he's talking about Exxon and then they like basically light the housing complex on fire Renee Russo getting hurt but she's wearing two uh, pieces of armor and that whole last fight Danny Glover has with the people he's shooting the Uzi 9mm that the the gun that uh, the kid he killed was carrying and you have Riggs and them defeat Jack Travis he's like Riggs and throws it and then it's through the tractor very basic but to me I just wish it was a more intense fight to me it didn't feel as intense as the first two movies I don't mind the film it's a great film and I'm glad it's different but I'm kinda of glad they made one more because this just wasn't enough for me as a conclusion it's a good film but ultimately to me it's similar to what like Scream 3 was compared to Scream 4 as a conclusion to a film series even though the first three have a similar vibe Mel Gibson as Riggs has the same hair this didn't feel strong enough to be a conclusion and ultimately Everything's okay at the end. He's with Lorna, and uh, it parallels to the opening of Lethal Weapon with Murtaugh in the bathtub and his family, and he's just like, I'm not going to retire. And I love that because Riggs is just like, I knew, I just knew you weren't going to retire. He's like, why didn't you go to the party? Because I knew you weren't going to retire. And then he's like opening the door for him, and Danny Glover's just like, I'll drive. He's like, I know, I know, I'm just getting the door. And he's like, well, thank you. And he's like, who's a grumpy bastard? Who's a grumpy bastard? I love it where Danny Glover is Murtaugh. He's just like, you know what, Riggs? I hope your next partner is just like you. And then he's just like, that's not going to happen. And he's just like, why? He's just like, there's winners and there's losers. And God wouldn't do that to me. And he's just like, my point exactly. And it, that dynamic between them is just hilarious. I love the ending and of it going out into the clouds. Again, Runaway Train by Elton John and Eric Clapton. And it's an all-around feel-good action film. Is it up there with the first two? No, but it is worthy the Lethal Weapon name. And uh, I like it. Uh, it's not my personal favorite, but I still like the film. And it was the first Lethal Weapon film I saw after one. I remember seeing completely it was Lethal Weapon 3. I love the love story between Laura Nicole and Riggs. Danny Glover stuff about getting goals, retiring mistakes, the job getting to him. And uh, the director's cut is also very good. Uh, they add scenes where Riggs is getting his trailer house expanded, and it's the contractor guy from 2. And then Murtaugh's daughter comes over to the house and is like, hey, he's not here. And it's like, oh, okay, that makes sense why he went over to the boat. And then you have an extra sequence where they have uh, Tyrone there, and it's one of the guys who buys guns from Jack Travis, and Danny Glover's like, you ever heard of the word genocide? And he's like talking to him with a gun, and anyways, I have him under a tire, Renee Roos is driving, and the tire's spinning, and they're interrogating him under a car. That's such a crazy sequence, and I love it, because it's like, Murtaugh get him back in his groove, he's like, I'm gonna go after these bastards. This kid's death is on my conscience, on me, and I have to fix it. So, it, it has some deep moments to it, and Richard Donner knows how to do action. It's a great series. So, what do I give Lethal Weapon 3? I give it a 3.5 and a B+. It's not as strong as the first two, but it is a worthy entry. Anyway, that's my quick action reaction for Lethal Weapon 3. If you like this video, feel free to like, comment, 
subscribe, check out my other Lethal Weapon videos, and yeah, uh, what are your favorite Lethal Weapon 3 moments? What's your favorite Lethal Weapon? If you haven't seen it, check out Lethal Weapon, and yeah, stay tuned for my review of Lethal Weapon 4. Anyway, that's all guys. Take care.